Okay, well, first let me apologize for uh, the delay that's been, uh, well, let's just say I've been busy. So, anyway, we're going to start a series of uh, videos here. Uh, some We've gotten a little off the track of beginner stuff, so this is going to be very, very beginner. Uh, what is a doll? Uh, what does a doll offer over, say, a mixer and a, and a, a couple tape machines? Uh, and, that, and that's it. Uh, we're just going to kind of run through that we're going to use Arter because uh, because that's what I've got and it's free Linux software but otherwise I hope that this is of uh, some use to you so let's get started okay well this this time we're going to look at uh, DAWs digital audio workstations uh, oh, some of the emails I get indicate that maybe uh, some of the other videos out there have started uh, assuming you know what a doll is and taking it from there for example uh, there's a video on on how to bring in MIDI into Ardor and uh, people don't have the basics of a digital audio workstation and therefore it's 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 starting a little too high so if you are an old hand at digital audio workstations well, feel free to click out now but otherwise, we're going to uh, do uh, two or three videos on what is a digital audio workstation, what are its basics, uh, how, to, how to just approach it. So to start with, the digital audio workstation is really a couple different things. It's a, it's a combination of a mixer. Uh, here's a small mixer, a very nice one. Uh, maybe a tape machine. Uh, you pull in some effects and put all that on steroids. And that's a digital audio workstation. And if, if you look, uh, there are kind of two main parts to this. Uh, here's what's called a mixer strip or a channel strip. And here is, uh, this would be like one track of a tape machine. This would be another track right here. The Notice I've labeled them, voice, uh, uh, dobro, conga, uh, and they would they would be you know different different uh, tracks different on a, on a four track or eight track or sixteen track machine, and that all gets mixed into you know when you're listening to your record uh, somebody recorded that on a big multi track machine and it all got mixed down and a digital audio workstation does the same thing however all inside of a computer, and so if I look here at a individual. Uh, strip an individual uh, channel in this uh, notice it it's got you know record stop play uh, fast forward or go to the end back up to the beginning so it's it kind of looks like a tape drive and those those controls that we get used to with with tape drives or recording machines is is uh, uh, makes sense to us here uh, same thing if you've ever used a mixer this strip will be uh, familiar uh, or at least somewhat familiar uh, so let's let's take a brief look here at a detail of a of an old-fashioned mixer uh, the the analog kind the kind that you know existed uh, and and you're used to here's here's a microphone a balanced input here's a quarter inch like you plug a guitar or something else into a quarter inch unbalanced input uh, here's a gain stage to set uh, maybe the microphone level up to uh, it, mixers tend to work on line level uh, voltages and so this is just notice this isn't to be used for the general output uh, it's just to be used to bring the, the microphone level or maybe bring it up or if this is too hot if the light if the unbalanced input is too hot uh, to tone it down a little bit but it just works on the actual line to, to bring it to line level volumes I'm going to skip over augs now. Uh, here's a little EQ, high, mid, low. Then the gain that's going into the master. And if I look back at my Mackie, here you see the same thing. And then here's all different tracks. Here's another strip. Here's another strip. And they all eventually come out over here in the main. Uh, and in that respect, this is the same thing except here. The master, which is always at the top in order, uh, is what's 
what's going on. You can see right now as I'm talking, uh, you can see uh, on this conga track the, the level change. Note that it's changing in the master. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time with this now. We'll do another video. What I really want to concentrate on is the channel strip. So a couple basics just to get around here in order. If we uh, Alt M, notice that I bring up the same tracks you just saw. Uh, here's vocals, music, dobro, and congro, and here's the master. And here's the three that I've got defined so far. Uh, Alt M again to get rid of that. And now I see a combined view. This is called the editor. That's a pretty common technology. And the one thing I want to drop in here real quick is that in general, when you're when you're looking at a digital audio workstation, you have a single session open, and a session means uh, a song, uh, one piece. See, this would not be for the entire album. This would not be for everything. This just one song is one session is one set of tracks that are going to be mixed down and in, into that. Another thing, and this is common across most dolls, is there will be a save option. And save doesn't mean save it in a wave, save it in an MP3. Save means save each of these channels individually so that when I bring this back up, I've got this whole picture. I've got the various tracks, etc., etc. What it's called is export. When you're ready to mix down to combine all these into one uh, song, one output, one wave file, one MP3 file, you export it into that or you mix down into that. And that's, that's pretty common language. So let's, let's look at this for a minute. Here's a track called Voice. This right here is its inputs. And if I click this, and once again, this is common to almost all DAWs, it gives me choices of my voice input track where am I getting this from? And here's some hardware coming in. Here's some uh, different things in order I can uh, input into this voice. And this is more for buses, uh, and we'll get to that later. Uh, but in general, where is voice in? Now notice it's not connected anywhere. You don't see here, uh, there. Now I've connected uh, this microphone into voice in. And the you know one side into left, one side into right. See how that works? That's that's pretty clear. But I'm not. I don't have it hooked now because I've already recorded the voice uh, here again in Dobro. I've already recorded the Dobro. So up here in in uh, the Dobro section, there's nothing there. But down here in Conga, I haven't recorded it yet. It's still hooked up. Uh, and I'd like to show you Conga. I didn't set it up as a stereo track. I set it up as a mono track. So here's uh, a single uh, mono into the Conga uh, from the two system captures. And on that, you can see my voice. Here's the level of my voice. If I... Uh, keep talking, and I pull this way down. Notice how the levels go way down or way up. They're, they're very, you know. Uh, so this is this is the gain. And here's various things we'll talk about later. But notice that the out is the master on the conga. Out, it's master on the dobro. Out's master on the voice. Uh, if we don't have any inserts, sends, or buses, then uh, they will all output to the master, and when we go to do mix down, it will uh, mix down or export. Uh, it will all feed into the conga, or all into the master, um, with the various levels. Like, again, let's look at uh, just the mixer. Yeah, here we go. And for vocals... No input. This is phase. Here's a fader. I come down, I can pan it right or left. Uh, record. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, solo and mute, if you don't know what that means. Mute means what you think it means. Mute this channel. Uh, solo means 
basically listen only to this channel and mute everything else. So if I was to come over here and uh, hit solo, notice how uh, I hit solo on conga. It's in the music group. You can group these tracks. Dobro and Congo both have uh, their levels. Mute is on for voice. By its <coughs> excuse me, if I had solo for voice, notice it mutes Conga and Dobro. Again, I have set groups here. Right click group. This is in the music group. I'm going to unhook those. Well, let's try that again. No group. Now if I mute the conga or solo the conga, it only solos the conga. So groups can be very handy if you've uh, got drums all together. Uh, you can put them all in one group and uh, click one button. I mean, all these things are just efficiency things. So uh, let's turn that off. And so there you go. I mean, basically, that's all there is to it for strips. Input, it comes down. Uh, we'll, we've talked some other time. Uh, I urge you to go see that intro to Arter video because it talks a lot more about you can put effects right here. Uh, I can add a new plug-in. Uh, any number of plugins. Uh, I can put uh, plugins behind the fader, this fader. So uh, I can record, I can uh, monitor, I can I can set uh, the monitor. The no, let's come down here. I can set this monitor to before, after input, uh, any custom things. So I can basically monitor what I want to. This strip is the other strip. See how they both move. Uh, together and and that's that's what this is so Arter digital audio workstations uh, the mixer part over here which is what we I hope we've covered uh, we didn't cover insert sends and buses we'll do that either some other time or I might go back and review the old uh, insert sends and buses with Arter and see if it's it's basic enough but uh, at, at any rate, that's that's what this is, digital, digital audio workstations introduction. Next time, we will go over some common uh, operations here on the mag thing, like notice I can move stuff around and I can copy and paste. There's some, there's some very cool things we can do with uh, the individual strips themselves, uh, setting up how many beats there is, and just some things that weren't uh, technically possible in the analog uh, tape uh, age. But for now, that's it. Uh, channel strips, uh, what's the name of it, what's coming in, what effects or uh, things do I have on it, uh, come down to it's, am I recording it, is it mute, solo, uh, monitor the strip, uh, again, Alt-M, you can see all these together, and while you're playing or doing whatever it is you're doing, uh, move, the, move the levels down, uh, and that's it, no, notice that I've uh, this is this is kind of interesting. Let's look at this for just one second. Uh, I changed this over here to input, and so notice I'm bringing the level down and I'm bringing it up, and it's changing what's going into the master uh, because I am changing the gain. But because it's uh, only mo this strip is monitoring the input uh, as I talk it's not changing it. Uh, the levels of my voice aren't changing. Only the, see, slick, huh? Well, these things are pretty cool. Uh, and once again, like I've said many, many times before, uh, you are not going to get all this listening to my voice. You got to, you got to play with it. You got to put it up. And again, uh, like the reason we have this is because it's a little more basic. If you have questions, uh, concerns, uh, my emails, flashed around here or there. You can leave comments on the YouTube or comments, uh, questions on the uh, Google Plus page or uh, use the various links there to email me directly, uh, whatever works for you. But in the meantime, uh, 
pull up a DAW, uh, get the plane a little bit, record something, even if it's your, your own voice going one, two, three, that'll do it. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. Okay, well that's that. I want to uh, I want to reiterate that uh, anything we we brushed over, uh, there's probably a lengthier video on it. Uh, for example, uh, with tracks, insert sends, and buses. I mean, we're going to touch on that a little bit next week when we uh, continue with the the channel strip side. But otherwise, uh, I hope that almost everything we're going to do here. The minute you're ready to look at something next, it's already uh, recorded and back in uh, Season 1. So otherwise, that's it. Uh, next week, we'll look at channel strips, and we'll start on the tracks themselves. Uh, and until then, hey, pull it up, give it a whirl, let's, let's get something going. <laughs>